It's not safe, Luca! Rollo, where are you? The treehouse! I'm at the treehouse, Rollo! Where are you? No, Luca, the treehouse isn't safe. They say they were going to the treehouse. I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse. Hey guys, the Elusive Mad here, and we are back with more Beacon Pines. What is going Our on in this town? Awaits. Our harvest awaits? That's how we're starting this. Okay. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, oh, stealing God. himself for Gran's wrath. Gran! She, well, she's not in here. Gran, I'm home. Everything's fine. Gran? It's quiet. Gran? I know I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I'll just help you look for Rolo. She's not out back either. Gran? Roxy came over. She was worried about him. So I figured you wouldn't mind if I helped look for him? Turns out Rolo's safe and sound! Is she in here, maybe? Luca was alone. The house was empty. So Grad's not back yet. I guess that's a good thing. Listen now, but sleep, I guess. <laughs> Face plant Luca on the bed. by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. What? Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. What? He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. Yeah. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. The, the it was my only option. The rest, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice, but I respect it. Wait, wrong choice? But I only had, my option was just bees. The pond began to freeze over. What? Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. I mean, yeah, that's how we learn. Propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath oh, him no. turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. But what is Sorry, going on? Kiddo, understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. <gasps> Dad, no, out. wait. His what? father casually uh, wound the reel. Super casually. Yeah, it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, uh, we have to go. Luca grabbed Dad, his father's shoulders, leave. trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. We can, we can run. We can leave. The crackled as it spread across his father's hands. No, 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 That's no. The thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. <gasps> you toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. Well, I don't think ice was part of the deal. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single oh, no. frozen mass. <gasps> Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard oh, no. ground, shattering into a no. thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. <sighs> and now we're being awoken by more Luca's scope. eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Hello? Uh, yeah. Suddenly, he could hear Rolo amongst the noise. Luca! Rolo, is that you? Luca! Yeah, yep, there? Rolo, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank God! Listen! I don't know how long this thing will, will work down here. Down... Down here? Rolo's voice was coming through more clearly now. 
but some words were still just static. The sweet so grabbed me yesterday. What? What? The man in the, ha in the hazmat suit? It was. Took me to some sort of. I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. They seem more interested in. For, n uh, for now, at least. Mr. Kerr said you made it back home safe. Kerr? No. Trust. He's. Hold on, someone's coming. The signal went silent. Hello? Hello, where are you? Luca held still, waiting for a response. I knew I shouldn't have listened to that guy. He seemed very suspicious. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. Getting worse. I can barely hear you. Lolo's voice began to fade. Losing signal. Not much time. Mission control. You need to... The treehouse. The treehouse. The signal died for good. <gasps> what was he trying to say about the treehouse? What's at the treehouse? The antenna. He wants me to use the antenna of the treehouse to get a bigger signal. Rolo, you're a genius. Luke grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Ah! This way. I was like, where? Which way is this is the treehouse? Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Oh, oh, it's Gran. So we all understand our roles. You can count on me. I still think we need more time. This was the original Mr. plan. Mr. paused, shifting his eyes to one side. We're all in danger now. I for one refuse to sit idly by while the danger persists. What is happening? Hiram, you just keep your wits about Mr. you. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. You're right, you can count on me. I just wish we could have made the deal with Mayor's Valentine. Her resources would have still come in handy. As I said, I had no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans change. How is Luca holding up? He's fine. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all. I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Spark Plug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? The three shared a determined look. What is going on? Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. She, I think she knows that I'm here. Gran. What are you meeting with Miss Fartelli and Mr. Tolliver last night? Oh! <laughs> hey, Luca! <laughs> Same. Same. Damn, you scared me. <laughs> How long have you been there? Oh, just a few minutes. Earlier today, I saw Miss Shulva and your grand enter the diner the other But when the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used the greatest tool on my investigation reporter. Time. When I left, I tailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem organized and determined. They bet you the festival? Yeah, I heard that too. Has your grand been doing anything differently recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from here, I am told her, it seems. She's either furious or terrified. Or both. Luca, be careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of a scoop of a lifetime. I will. Are you coming out? No, I'm gonna stick out here for a bit longer. See you, Luca! Okay. <sighs> Alright, we're going to mission control. What are they doing over there? Old Picker's Pond. Should I go talk to them? I feel like I sh- What are they doing out? It's a bit suspicious. 
I did it! I changed the sign. So, did anyone see you? I don't believe so. You were right. It was simple enough to rearrange the letters. Odd choice for a prank, though. In situations such as these, odd the is good. The two boys shared a mischievous grin. Can't wait for everyone to see the big reveal. It should be quite memorable. Let's make ourselves scarce for now. What sign did they change? There's also a light on. It's not the festival sign. I'm very- I, like, I haven't tried to go into this building, but there's a light on inside that I'm like... Very curious about. Okay, we're going to Mission Control. Mission Control is where we have to go. Because Rolo needs our help. Lights are on. I'm hoping that's... That's not what I wanted. This one? Okay. Rolo. Rolo, are you there? I'm at the treehouse now, Rolo. Mr. Curtis said you were alright. What happened out there? Dang it, Rolo, where are you? Why? Who's there? People could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. I've got weapons in here, so you better come out right now. Strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Uh. Weapons? How could you hurt something that's already dead? Fear gripped Luca's throat. Who are you? Oh, you don't recognize me. Guess I don't recognize myself Luke anymore. Stood at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Uh... I'm a monster. And now they hug me like the beast I am. Iggy? Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Don't touch me! This is all your fault! Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. I didn't. I'm so sorry. I... I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you could control yourself for a second and I get to be like this forever? There must be a way to fix this. Oh, you gotta be my savior. Perfect little Luca saves the day. With his positive attitude and the power of friendship. I... None of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They used to be all through Weepwood. Nearly came in here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca, Luca! Rollo? It's not safe, Luca! Rollo, where are you? The treehouse! I'm at the treehouse, Rollo! Where are you? No, Luca, the treehouse isn't safe. They say they were going to the treehouse. I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse. Who said they're going to the treehouse? The clipboards. What'd I tell you? Those perennial harvest wackadoos are after me. They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. <laughs> like questions. <laughs> What sort of question? <laughs> they were saying the same stuff they always do. But it's different now. Less asking, more threatening. We're gonna figure this out, Iggy. Yeah, well... Thanks. Hello? Is there a present of this... Arboreal domicile? Is there a present of this arboreal domicile? Crap, they found me. Luca, what's happening? Don't panic. You stay here, and I'll see what they want. Hello, Mr. Van Horn. 
We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an informal chat? We'll be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh, be down in a sec. Of course, of course. <laughs> what the fuck? Was this a hive mind? We have a problem. Luca, you gotta get out of there. <laughs> Who's out there? Is it them? Yeah, the clipboards. A bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. They're saying the same stuff, but with the creepy knob cranked to ten. My young my young Yigi be present. We would love to hear his thoughts. Run! He slumped to his knees. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC. MCDC? Mission Control Defense Cannon. Oh boy. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. I don't trust him. I don't trust any of them. Iggy, there you are. You gave... Thank you, there you are! You gave all of us a heck of a scare. Get away, just leave me alone! Oh, I'm sorry, Iggy, but no can do! No worry, though, we're here to help! Help? Then why are you chasing me? Luke, can you talk some sense up to- Uh, is your pal up there? Just look at him, he's not well. What's wrong with him? What did the gunk do to him? Well, it's a pretty honky big question, Luca. All you need to know is that he's sick. He's real sick, Luca. I just need you to let us help. I just need you to let us up there and take care of him. I told you Rolo was okay. That he was back at his place. You told me Rolo was okay. That he was back at his place resting. He is. Poor fellow just got a little lost. That's a lie. That's a hurtful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why? Because he lets you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Her smile faltered. <laughs> Why don't you pop down here so we can have a face to face? You don't like this is gonna give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? Grip tightened on the MCDC. What'd you do to Rolo, you liar? Well, shucks, Luca, the only teeny tiny fib I told you was that he was at home. He is re he is resting and he is perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite the pickle and I'm the only person in this whole wide world who can help you. You get to decide how this ends. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Oh he boy. Wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. With fire in our eyes, we are going to fight. Luca drew They're not gonna take us. And decided not easily. To take the only option they had left. Swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Get him! Hey, Mr. Kerr. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Rolo sends his regards. <laughs> hey! That was a call for more than a little rude. And just plain unsanitary. Luca, I really think we were good pals. What a shame that it's come to this. Her turned his back on the two boys. And this. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. Uh oh. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse. Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. Uh. The end. <gasps> that escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now.
Hmm. So my only option there was to fight. So the only thing that I can really go back to is here. And tickle him. Maybe this means that he won't get a, a go into the puddle. I took a deep breath and thought, well, time to bust out the tickles. Well, <laughs> time to bust out the tickles. Okay. Hey, Tish, what is something cool? <laughs> yup. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Oh, does it work? What the? Tish, she tickling you? Yep. Hey, yep. <laughs> yep. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between <laughs> gales of laughter. <laughs> yep. 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 Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. <laughs> what just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening Eddie's us. His eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm -hmm. See you around, new kid. He kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Oh! <gasps> no, no, no. Oh! Whoa! What a little creep. Uh, uh, Beck, I think you got ooze in your hair. She took the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Oh no. Is it bad? It depends what you're feeling about having a more mature or fine look? Oh god. Chapter 4 <sighs> The Best Policy Best policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolla was his primary concern. I don't think there's anywhere else that I can go around here. Yeah, let's not try and run across the ooze. It's probably for the best. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old, so not recent. Look at what the hell are you doing here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Foxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. Thanks, Beck. Or that's Beck. <laughs> I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping looking for Olo. Luca, and you just start telling me the Roxy's truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Um, Bolo and I were just playing a weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. Someone was there in a strange suit, and we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us, and I think it was a body. So we ran, but we got split up, and I ran home, and it's my fault, and my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined <sighs> sigh... She looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolla's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this, Luca. Go home. But I wanna help. It's too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. That's a little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolla shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. You really believe that story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has, has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. 
Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. I'm worried that they're gonna interact with that puzzle in a weird way. Wait at the treehouse for in case Roller shows up. Oh. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Uh. <laughs> but don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh no. Just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it really. The whole thing's a waste of money if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo does those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank. He did. He's not playing a prank, and he did get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless. Luca, there's something else that you know. Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Oh boy. Dang it, boy, if there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something I don't, eating away at him. I don't trust him. There was a shame looking behind those eyes? was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. <sighs> Is it shame? I'm hoping it's shame. Yesterday, Rollo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. But with a view? You're with Rollo? When he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first we were looking around, but someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm... sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said, Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Oh. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep Luca you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncrete's hand clamped down on his oh, shoulder. Oh no. But you Von Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close, so close to being done with, with this. With a firm shove, Nuncrete manhandled Luca into the phone booth. Wait, what? Wait, what? What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. What? Shit. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. Oh no. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. What? Luca winced oh and my pressed God. his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air, and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Oh no. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. 
The end. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. What happened? All right, guys. I'm going to have to... I'm going to leave this part here. Oh my god. Wait, so Mr. Nuncrete is behind this and he knows what's going on. So we can't trust him. All right, we're going to find out what's going on more with this next time. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This is getting so intense. It's so good. But um, let me know what you think is happening. What are your hypotheses about the story? Who done it? I mean, Mr. Nuncrete seems very suspicious at this current moment in time. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and maybe a comment on the video. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.